Okay, so here are the steps. The brief steps to just let you know which order to do things and what to focus on at first. So this is going to be your absolute Bible at the beginning, the Monster Mapping Kit Handbook. And from this, you're going to use the this um, sheet here to create these two strips. We've got the monsters on the top, we've got the sand picks on the top, and you can see this is quite a new addition, we've got the little monsters on the top of the letters. That's because right from the beginning we're letting the children know that this is a picture, a sound picture, for the speech sound but it's not the only picture for s, and that can also represent a different sound. So what we're saying here very clearly is we're embedding this speech sound monster, this phonetic symbol for kids, just to say in this word or when we're doing this work this does represent s even if it's on its own it's isolated it's not in a word we're saying for the purposes of this activity it represents the sound s as the children move to explore things like the spelling cloud key ring they're going to see that yes that was a representation for s here are all other representations for s when we're spelling and also that S can represent different sounds. For example, if you have, if you have sugar in your coffee, tea, whatever. So letters can represent sounds. They can represent lots of different sounds and sounds can be represented by different letters. Um, so the Monster Mapping Kit Handbook, the first thing you're going to do is create these. Now to start off with, because we're just going to check phonemic awareness, that one will go away. And the focus is just on this. So we want the child to say, oh, when you say, where's Monster? S to point to that. Where's Monster? Mm. So it's Monster S, Monster A. That's their name. Monster T, Monster P. Monster I, monster N. What sound do they make? It's like saying, here's, um, you know, here's dog woof. What sound does he make, woof? <laughs> you know, we're being really, really specific here. It's monster S and monster says S, says S. So the first thing to do, and that's why we keep them in this order, is that if you were to take them off or whatever and say, who's this? That's monster I. What sound does monster I say? Monster I says I. Okay, and they can put it back. And it's always in the right order. So s, at, p, i, n. And we keep them that keep it in that order and they like to stick them back again. So when you do get little Velcro drop dots uh, so that you can create this little strip. So the first thing they're going to do is learn the monster sounds. This monster says ah. 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 <laughs> this is the one with your favorite. Yeah. I. Rose. A. A. 
Reach out, Jalen. Ah, 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 ah. Can you run? Susie, you ready to do your monsters? Yeah. Okay, you ready? What is this monster? Good girl. What is this monster? Ah, ah. Ah, good girl. What is this monster? Tut, tut, tut. Good girl. Tut, tut. Well done. What is this monster? Good girl. What is this monster? E. 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 That's e. it. E. 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 Good girl. Ready? What is this monster? E. Mm. Good girl. Sorry, that my I'm the monster sounds. I'm so excited. Monster. Ah. Um, just do it, put it on the fridge, you know, every time you go to the fridge or whatever, say, oh, find me monsters, find me monsters, it, whatever. Uh, play hiding games, you might hide one of them in the house, oh, I can't find, there's a monster, monster's hiding, which one is it, go and find it, have little games. The purpose, though, is that they can, if you say, what sound does this monster say, she, um, the child will say, Tch. What sound does this monster say? The child would say, mm, just the same as if you looked at a dog and said, what sound does this um, animal make? Woof, meow, whatever. It's exactly the same concept, so children are used to that. Um, when we've gone from this um, phonemic awareness, we're going to go into the green code level, which is, this is the grapheme teaching order that a lot of schools do, but they miss this important part, and they go straight into looking at that and just saying, Sh without sort of getting it clear to the child that that is a representation for not in all words, etc, etc. So that's why we don't just have it in isolation, we have the monsters next to it. Don't worry about these little tiny symbols here, they're just phonetic symbols. They're the real phonetic symbols from the IPA that say this is a, this represents a sound. Okay, so the first thing you're going to do, the child is going to do, is learn those monster sounds. Now while they're doing it, it's really good to, to use them so we're going to ignore this for the moment, these pictures of the sounds. You can use them, for example, because what we want the children to do is follow the monster sounds to say the word and get used to using their duck hands. There's the duck puppet. So we're getting used to left to right. So you might put them out and say, oh, what word is the monster, what are the monsters telling us? Oh, can you follow the monster sounds to say the word? So they're getting used to left to right and blending. Sip, sip. Now, if the child can't blend, if they go sip because they can remember the sound, which is just a memory thing, blending requires phonemic awareness. And a lot of children don't have that, and that's why we're doing all of this. So if they're going sip, don't just wait for them because if their brains can't hear it, their brains can't hear it, so tell them the word. So um, if they're going sip and they don't say it, then you say, oh, sip. Let's do it again. Sip, sip. Or if you know that your child has really poor phonemic awareness, you might say, look, I've put out the word sip. Can you follow the monster sounds so they know what it's supposed to be and they go sip and they know what it's supposed to be and their brain will start to go, oh, hold on, sip, sip and start to put it together. And once you develop the phonemic awareness, it's like riding a bike. You're never going to forget. Great. Excellent ten page. Next one. 
Good girl, turn the page. Okay, so these are our visual prompts. And these are all words that um, can be spoken with the sounds, the phonemes, the speech sound monster sounds, s, at, p, i, n. They happen to be represented with the spelling with these graphemes, these pictures of the sounds. But we don't worry about that too much at the moment. What we're worrying about is thinking about do they know the sounds and do they know the visual prompts. So monster sounds, visual prompts. What to do? Come here, come here. I, The visual prompts are going to be important because if they're, well, as I said to you before, that you were going to say the word if your child has poor phonemic awareness, here you aren't needed, and that's what everything is all about. It's about doing it so that the children don't need you. So here they don't need you to say, oh, it's pan, put at and pan. They don't need you because there's a the visual prompt for pan there. So this is absolute gold because as long as they know the visual prompt, as long as they know the sound, they can do the phonemic awareness work on their own. And as we transition through, it's also a lot easier for the children because they already know, okay, so the sounds, pat, mm, pat, sorry, put at, pat, she's patted the dolphin, put at, pat. So it makes it a lot easier when we go on to here with the pictures of the sounds, pat, pat. And you can see black, grey, black, because what they're going to think is sound, sound, sound. So when we move into things like ship, where the SH is going to be black and the grey is going to be I and the P is going to be in black, they can see, it doesn't matter how many letters there are, it shows the sounds. So it could be two or three letters that are the same colour before the next one, etc. Now the speech sound duck is really important. You can use the speech sound duck as a duck puppet, your hands go in there. Um, but if you haven't got a duck puppet, use your hands all the time. It's really important they use their duck hands, or I sometimes use my duck fingers if it's really small, put at and pan. Uh, but then make sure that they're segmenting. So when they go, so they might be going p a m pan. So it's p a m pan. They're just using a duck hand for every sound and then blending it from left to right because that's what we're going to do we're going to be thinking about the sounds like if it was the word pan think about what happens from the translation from what we say to what goes down on paper so if we're saying pan what we're really doing is we're saying the sounds p -a -n, pan and when we go to write it using the monster routine um we go p -a -n, pan p -a -n, pan i just play it to check p a uh, n mm, pan let's just check p a uh, n mm, pan so i've said i've got my speech sound lines they're ready so which speech sounds sit on the lines pan p a uh, n mm, pan s at p i n mm. it's this one isn't it p a uh, n mm. and use the sounds app p a uh, n mm. p a uh, n mm. So what we've done is we've gone from saying it to think about how it's going to be organised on paper when we're talking on paper, p -a -n pan, and then the next step, you're either using it with the little ones and at the beginning stages where we've got the, the picture of the speech sound. So, okay, so p, what is the picture for p in this word? It's this one. And look, they match up anyway. What's the picture for a ah in this word? And they're lined up. So it's really easy to learn. What's the picture for n? Mm? Really easy to learn. P -a -n pan. So we've gone from speech, 
looking at the speech sounds not worried about the letters then we thought okay we've organized it properly we've got the right sounds because we've got the right speech sound monsters there okay so push him up what's the picture for the p what's the picture for the a what's the picture for the n and the next step on the monster routine is that they can see it to draw it p and they still say the sound p a n and when i'm having sessions with the children we spend ages learning how to do the monster routine p a n p a n because this routine is going to really help them to spell any words at all and i was busy taking them all off we always put them back and say the sounds so p a n p a n p a Mm, pan it just reinforces it so I had pan and I would ask them to write it again now I just want to show you so the reason that we do this is because we're setting it up with the monster monster routine past the green code level you don't need those you just need the monsters oh sorry they're falling off you just need the monsters so you just need the monster mat you can buy it separately but it's in the kit handbook so that just shows you what to do so this one never gets cut up and this one does so you just need again some little velcro dots so here's my monster mat this is all the monsters and all the sounds of english so i don't need these just these six because now we're doing all of them and now we can spell any words because we're going speech to print so the monster routine is exactly the same supposing we were going to you know spell the word fairy we've been reading about fairy stories whatever so they think about their duck hands <sighs> air er, e fairy speech down num lines <sighs> air er, e fairy num uh, play it <sighs> Air or e fairy speech sound numbers. <sighs> Air or e fairy, and obviously our little ones often choose the the cards that are already got the numbers on, or you just do those numbers for you for them. So here we've got fairy. We know we've said it. We've we're organised it for the sounds. Now we just need to check that we've got the right speech sound monsters. So now we're going to put monster. <sighs> monster air don't worry the children learn these much quicker than you do F air er, e. okay so we've got the sounds so now we've got the sounds and this is actually when we would check with the ipa don't worry about that at the moment but we would check um even my four and five year olds are checking the phonetic symbols they'll go to to phonetics.com whatever and they'll type in the word They'll say to someone, how do you spell the word? Type it in and they'll check they've got the right speech sound monsters because this part is really important. So now that we've got these sounds, this is when they say, well, if I knew how to spell it, I, I could. And, this, you know, what am I doing this for? You can do it to reinforce, but usually they're doing it because they don't know how to spell the word. So what you do now is you tell them the word. But there is absolutely no point telling a child a word and not doing anything with them or they learn it as a whole word. That is not in line with, you know, the theory of orthographic mapping and how children learn to self-teach and to read and spell quickly and easily. So here we've got, okay, so that is how the speech sound king, who's sitting up there somewhere, my speech sound king. Oh, is he hiding? Speech sound king. He created the whole code in the story, the SSP story. So he decided on the pictures of the sounds. So the picture for the sound in this word is the letter F. The picture for the sound in this word for the air sound is the AI. Air, air. The picture for the R in this word is the R. Air, R. The picture, the sound picture for the sound E is this one. Air or e fairy. So it doesn't matter that the child hasn't learnt those. It doesn't matter if there's a grapheme that isn't even in the code level, the four code levels, because the child can go speech to print. What are the sounds? What are the monsters? Let's just check the monsters because perhaps I say this differently than the spelling code because the spelling code is universal, and it's you know your your the way you say things might be different. 
but here we've got fairy so we managed to map it out which is also reinforcing our phonemic awareness we looked at the word we mapped it every letter is always used it's really mathematical every letter is used every letter is mapped and so now they've seen how the word fairy is mapped phoneme to grapheme mapping and if they write it as well which a lot of our children who are three and four aren't able to write them yet and that's fine you write it go a r e fairy so it's just reinforcing that mapping code mapping a r e fairy and when they see that word um let's do it one more time Fairy. E. and when they see that word in a book they will not only know that's the word fairy they will know the mapping of it that is the basis of orthographic mapping which is the sort of current theory if you like um, established theory of how children learn to read and spell the discrepancies we have are people not really knowing how to get there and that's why we have such a funny mishmash of phonics different kinds of phonics it's all about understanding the mapping of these speech sounds to the pictures of the sounds which is called graphemes so as they transition in they're going to be able to look at the at sat and they can look at that at sat so they know they're the sounds i'm blending they're the graphemes they're the sound picks i'm blending but if they can't remember what those graphemes were they can look at the monsters the reason it's really important to, to learn all the monsters as quickly as possible, not just those six, but if they, you know, if they learn those six really quickly and, and fly, do all the, the, the monsters. But they need to know all the monsters because of their name. Again, Maya. Mm. I. Uh. Maya. Maya. Lara. Mm. They need to understand how their name is monster mapped but also because it's so much easier to use the resources like for example the high frequency words you know days months colors etc high frequency words so when we come to let's just start off with duck level one. Oh no that was the end of duck level one so was etc so it's really important that they know all the monsters um, which they are looking at on their monster map mat and in the sounds app because when they look at these if they saw them without the monsters it's an s and an o a w a and an s and that's fine but if you're not there to help them they might get stuck and not realize that this represents this they're likely to know that but this represents the o so they can blend them into the word so but look at this one word so here, that A, that here it's monster A, because we're building words like, you know, sat, sit, nap, nip, whatever. Here, it represents the O sound. So that's monster O. We are going to meet monster O in the purple code level. O, there's monster O. Here, the picture for O is there. So it's much easier if the children know all of the monsters, not just because they're going through the phonics, but to get them to know all the monsters really, really quickly using your monster mat. Because the earlier they can do that, the easier it is for them to learn high frequency words that don't necessarily align with the phonics or um, they're not ready for yet because they haven't got to it on the phonics. It means that they can explore these high frequency words and these words are really important because when you look at real books, they're all over the place. I want to say I'm going to do this for the ending for you. This word is just a word, normal word. And this or oh, is a A for a O oh today. And this is an S today.
and well that, that's what they're looking for they're looking for the monsters and what represents that sound etc so if we had the word hole let's say and um, then the um the would be a wh wouldn't it it would be representing the here it's representing the w sound so these monsters are really important because it brings the child regardless of what the letters are there are only 26 letters of the alphabet but they represent so many different sounds and right from the beginning even though the child has seen that that a represents the a because the monster's there saying that's a here's the monster there saying no this time it's o so it's really really important so we're going to start off slow that foundational work is what prepares them so that they can learn on their own without you they can self-teach they can get on with the activities um really really quickly so first things first get to know the monsters get to know the visual prompts and start following the monster sounds on this sheet 